everyone. Good morning, El Paso. A possible bus driver strike is no longer looming this morning for students in Las Cruces. So what's next in the negotiations? Patriot riders ride into town alongside a replica of the Vietnam Memorial. Why this visit to Fort Bliss is making history. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders held competing rallies in New York City. Find out who had the most in the audience and how that compares to the polls. I'm ABC's Lana Zak with that story coming up. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. Good morning, El Paso, Las Cruces, and Juarez. Thanks for waking up so early with us today. I'm Hillary Florin. And I'm Crystal Clyde. Let's get to that forecast this morning. Temperatures better start than they were yesterday. That's because they're a little warmer than they were yesterday. We're at 53 in El Paso. Winds are at 3 miles per hour, so not too strong with our winds right now. Later today, I do expect just some light to breezy winds in the afternoon. That's around El Paso and Las Cruces. In Las Cruces, currently 47 the temperature. We are clear out there and those winds calm as we speak. And for your clouds and radar map, not a lot going on because today, like yesterday, should be a sunny day as we move forward. Changes, though, Friday into your weekend. We'll have the details on those changes in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Crystal. And now to the headlines. School buses in Las Cruces will be taking students to school this morning, after all. We can also tell you they won't be going on strike later today either. From our New Mexico Mobile Newsroom, the union and the district's contractor reached a tentative agreement on a contract. Okay. Now, union members were on the verge of a strike after storming out of the negotiation room, but they did end up going back to the bargaining table. The union says it was arguing for a safer environment for kids, higher wages, and more sick days for employees. The Trump team has been touting a campaign reboot, including a new laser focus on racking up delegates, adding a national political director, and Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, meanwhile, staged dueling New York City rallies on Wednesday night, ahead of tonight's big debate. Here's ABC's Lana Zak with more. It's your voice, your vote. Tonight, the two Democrats will face off in the first debate since the rhetoric between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders turned from courteous to contentious. In New York, Hillary Clinton maintains a double-digit lead over Bernie Sanders, but you never would have guessed it based on the estimated sizes of their competing rallies last night. 1,200 for a Clinton event in the Bronx, and 27,000 for a Sanders event at Washington Square Park. While on the Republican I'll side, you, what, you can't let the bosses take it away. So Donald I Trump continues to urge supporters to fight against what he calls a rigged Republican time. system. And now there are increasing reports of death threats against Republican delegates. Very spooky, very personal. Trump's longtime ally Roger Stone said he would help angry supporters find Republican delegates at the convention. We will disclose the hotels and the room numbers of those delegates who are directly involved in the steal. Ted Cruz on CNN said the Trump campaign was encouraging thousands of threats against the Republican Party chair in Colorado. Trump supporters were telling the supporters go to his house and bring their guns. But while Trump's battle intensifies with some, he is making nice with others. We met for about an hour, just the two of us, and had a chance to clear the air. Fox News host Megyn Kelly, the subject of so many of Trump's Twitter tirades, laughed when she said Trump's doorman seemed surprised to see her. Lana Zak, ABC News, Washington. Beginning today, you can visit a replica of the Vietnam Memorial Wall right here in El Paso. For a few days at least, we have Good Morning El Paso's Denise Olivas live right now to explain. Good morning. Good morning, Hillary. Well, the sun is just starting to slowly rise over the borderland, but the glow of this memorial, this replica, also known as the wall that heals, has been glowing in the overnight hours and remains glowing at this hour. And on this replica, more than 58,000 names of those killed or still missing are etched into this wall uh, from the uh, Vietnam War. So again, now people can come visit it here in El Paso. And ABC7 was here at Fort Bliss National Cemetery as a big rig uh, came into a national, the National Cemetery carrying this wall. And it was even escorted by the Patriot Riders. And we know that it will be here until Sunday. And you can visit you can visit at any time of the day. And the director of the National Cemetery says this is for all the veterans across the borderland. This is open to the public. Uh, we actually open 24-7 for 
for the next three days. So they can come in and view at night. We will have somebody here 24 hours a day. And of course, this has taken a lot of volunteers. They have been here around the clock and they will be here 24 hours a day until Sunday at 5 o'clock. So you can come visit it at any time. For now, we're live at the, at the Fort Bliss National Cemetery. Denise Olivas, ABC 7. Thanks so much, Denise. New this morning, El Paso Congressman Beto O'Rourke has received the Outstanding House Legislator of the Year Award from the Disabled American Veterans, a national veteran service organization. O'Rourke was chosen among all of the 435 members of the House for this award. Award. Gary Augustine, the executive director of the DAV in Washington, said Representative Beto O'Rourke, quote, has become a nationally recognized leader on veterans issues, working in a principled and bipartisan manner to improve the lives of the men and women who served. Congratulations. The man who admitted to beating a woman to death with a baseball bat has been sentenced to life in prison. 53-year-old Jesus Chavez pleaded guilty to the 2014 murder on Monday. The woman, 51-year-old Laura Lada, died at the hospital three days after she was attacked. Along with the life sentence, Chavez was also fined $10,000. Happening today, closing arguments are set to begin in the trial of a man accused of a double murder. Luis Rodriguez is charged with capital murder for the 2012 killings of 32-year-old Luis Antonio Fierro and 19-year-old Roberto Renteria. The shooting was allegedly linked to the Barrio Azteca gang. Yesterday, jurors saw crime scene photos showing the two victims on the side of the canal, each shot multiple times in the head and torso. The prosecution and defense both rested their cases yesterday. Police have made two arrests after a weekend shooting in East El Paso that happened Saturday night on the 11,000 block of Rojas. The victim, 27-year-old Nathaniel Jones, was taken to the hospital. He's listed in stable condition. 24-year-old Derek Lattimore and 29-year-old Anthony Jones are accused of the shootings. This is Lattimore's mugshot. Jones's mugshot has not been released. Authorities say robbery was a motive. And now at 6.07, we're checking in with meteorologist Crystal Cly, talking about our warm temperatures expected. Good morning. Good morning, Hillary. That's right. Warm conditions in the forecast for today, warmer than yesterday. So yesterday, we hit a high of 78. Today, we're already looking at about 75 degrees on your planner at noon. Sunny throughout the forecasting period with a high today of 86 degrees. This is, of course, much warmer than average for this time of year. We'll also be just a bit breezy as we move into the afternoon through 6 p.m. Your commute, 84 and sunshine. No chance of rain in this forecast, at least not today. Now, as we move forward, the focus goes from warmer conditions to high winds. Check out your Friday gusts at 40 miles per hour and still windy Saturday gusts at 30. We do see more light to breezy winds Sunday, Monday, and then even lower into next week. We're going to talk more about your Friday, though, tomorrow when those high gusts hit. That'll be up in 10 minutes. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Crystal. We do have a traffic alert to give you a heads up on. Gateway East is shut down right now at Piedras. Unexpectedly, this is due Due to the road caving in during construction yesterday. So it's not clear when exactly this will be fixed, but in the meantime, your best bet to get around it will be to use the freeway, get off at Copia instead, and then make a U-turn or maybe head south depending on where you're going. A live look at traffic for you right now at 6.08. Things are looking good this morning. It is beginning to pick up a little out there. No tie-ups to tell you about if you're heading out. And we have much more to come right here on Good Morning El Paso. Police have identified the pedestrian who was hit last night by a car on the east side. Why they say it is not the driver's fault. This is ABC7, where news comes first.